Hi guys. It's uh it's uh I don't actually know what time it is, hang on. Twelve twenty five at night. Yeah, it's been a quiet ish few days. I've been organising stuff for my eBay supplies, such as those handlebars and that box. Pretty much emptied the crap out of that box so I could uh, get the handlebars in it out of the way. Um, I have thought of a possible way that might work for me to uh, raise my limits. But I might need my stepdad's help to do it. Um, a few parcels on here to post. I've got that, that, and these phones. Because, you know, I've actually just received a message on eBay regarding these iPods saying that um, I could have sold them for a lot more than what I got for these, but can I really be asked? No. <laughs> I can't, to be honest. Um, I've adjusted my timer on my lights under there. I've got them on a timer now. You can just see the little neon light glowing. I'm actually wondering if Stepdad's got another one, because he had one on his marine fish tank, which um, he was going to take the marine fish and everything with him, but it was going to be too awkward, because they're moving, by the way. They view the um, bungalow Tuesday and get the keys Friday. Apparently handover is Friday. So, uh, yeah, he was going to take it all with him, but he's decided... It would have been too awkward because you'd have to um it's not ordinary water in the tank it's what they call ro water special purified salty water for marine you know specifically done for marine fish tanks so you would have to have bucketed that all up into sterilized buckets and whatnot which meant moving several, several buckets or containers of water. Because that was that's a big six foot long tank. So in the end he just decided, you know, do away with it. And he'll probably go for tropical. Which is a lot easier to maintain for one. Um, he's still going to rent the workshop until he's got the one built at the bungalow. May not be as big as what he's currently got. Um, at their current house but he doesn't have to worry about any power cable or anything because I've got that um, so yeah it's going to be hectic right this close to Christmas as well and with no budget to rent vans or anything either yay <laughs> well, actually I'm spending my money on other things because I've got an addiction at the minute and I don't bloody care my money my flat will do what I like I'm not sure if that was me or the cat making noises could be the cat because he's gone through to the other room. Right. I want to know something weird about My Little Pony. I know I said I wouldn't talk about it on here, but this is something I think is worth a mention. See these little figures up here? I've got all them along there. I've actually got 30 on that shelf. And I've got all of these in here. We might not actually find them. Where are they? There they are. Those are duplicate figures. They cost £1.99 from the shops. In a blind bag, you know, like you get Lego minifigures. They come in a polythene blind bag. They're a um, minifigure series. On eBay, they sell from £2.50 plus probably depending on what the figure is obviously 
and whether or not it's got the card that come with it. And there's a lot of these um, toys for My Little Pony that um, are just like that. It's like Lego. You can in buy it and invest in it and keep it packaged and you ain't going to lose any money. You're going to gain money. Especially if it's a collectible set from the show. It's weird. It probably helps that it's got the fan base that it has. So, uh, yeah. I'm actually watching some job lots of these figures on eBay. Which will give me some more duplicate figures, but I can turn it around and put them back on eBay. And make a bit of extra cash in the process. I'm not silly. <laughs> I could actually... I could do the same with my Lego. I've got two Lego bulldozers. I don't know why I don't, actually. I keep saying I want to keep it for the parts, but I might as well just sell the damn thing as it is. But I need to sort eBay first. I need to get my limits raised. Um, and one way to do that through their website is to um, confirm another established account. Now, of course, I don't have one. But I know a man who does. Because how it works, you type in a few certain details that only you know that relate to this established eBay account that you own. They send a pin to the email address associated with this other eBay account. You confirm that pin and it will match the selling limit from one account to the other. So I'm hoping I can do that using my stepdad's eBay account. I'll have a word with him tomorrow. Because if it works, it's going to save a lot of faffing around. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> um... It will, it'll just save a lot of faffing around. Otherwise, I'd have to message eBay, get the phone number for the department that I've got to ring, because I've lost the email with that phone number in. Because, I don't know if I mentioned in a video during the week, I did email eBay and they did reply, um, giving me a phone number direct to the department that I need that deals with eBay accounts to discuss raising my limits. I'm not very good on the telephone anyway. I absolutely freaking hate it. But if I had to, if I have to go down that route, I'm gonna have to do it because I need, you know, I need to raise my limits. So, I know <laughs> using my stepdad's account is a cheat, but if it works, it works. And uh, I'm probably not the only one out there that's ever done it. Oh yeah, and there was something that did sort of tick me off on Facebook earlier. And I don't know why people have got to be like it. You take a fan base, right? The Lego fan base. Uh, what do they call them ones that are interested in anime? I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, Bronies, or Pegasisters, whatever you want to call them. Um... Furries, you know, Doctor Who fans. It just doesn't matter what the fan base is. 99.9% .9 of the members, including, you know, on Facebook groups or forums or whatever, are all nice, respectful. You know, they treat you with respect, you treat them with respect, you know. It's a nice atmosphere. You can have discussions usually about the topic at hand, but, you know, you can have civil discussions. You go on any of these other groups, you know, that, I don't know, classic car related on... These are Facebook groups or, you know, local groups or whatever, and people just want to reply to you like you're a piece of shit. Because I was on one that was called, um... 
Car Transporter and Bollocks is the group. And they were discussing again a petition that's going around to get Theresa May, our Prime Minister, to force cyclists to have tax, MOT and insurance. Which I suppose in a way is fair enough. I'm not sure how they would tax a bicycle. And someone actually said, you know, they should have a registration plate on the bike. So I jokingly said, you know, where are they going to put it on the ras? Because where are you going to put a bloody great yellow registration plate on a bicycle? And his reply was, the same way as they do on a motorcycle, you thick twat. And I'm thinking, what is with the petty name calling? Was it necessary? I wasn't really rude to you. Didn't call you any names. Just on all these stupid Facebook groups, that's how people are. You can't have a civil dis debate. And if people aren't, you know, being rude, shall I say, to me, they're being rude to each other. I don't understand why people have got to be like it, because you don't see it in these fan groups. That's why I like being part of the Lego fan base. Being a brony. Because I actually have to say the Facebook community is bloody top. I love it. I can have civil conversations. I can have fun. Without someone resorting to bloody petty name calling. Not so much the fairy fandom though. <laughs> Actually, yeah, it's not too bad. <clears throat> yeah. I'm on a number of Lego groups on Facebook, and it's the same thing, you know, everyone is nice. They compliment your models that you share, you know. On this, ma on this main brony group I'm on, I've only been on there for like a week or so, Admins are great as well. They dealt with a situation today very professionally. I was impressed. So. Why can't all groups, why can't everyone be like that? You know, you go on some of these Facebook groups and the admins are just power hungry. If they don't like something you've said, they delete it. If they don't like, you know something you've posted they delete it no reason no warning just boop. and if you argue with them you get kicked off now i've never done that on any of the groups i admin so long as it's within the rules if i'm in a good mood i'll be lenient and let a few things sway and slip through if i'm in a good mood <laughs> or if it's something you know comical or something like that if it's too far off topic, off, uh, off topic, then I won't, but, you know, I've, the only ones I've really banned from any of the groups I admin are actual spammers, you know, those that set up a Facebook profile just to spam a product or porn or something, those are the only ones I bloody ban. It's... Actually, in the two or three years I've admined for this one guy on Facebook, actual assholes will say that I've banned. I could count on one hand, probably. Because most of the time, I just let them get on with it. Even on my own groups, I just let them get on with it. Because the way I see it, if there's a problem, they'll report it. Or they'll message me, so... <laughs> anyway, I'm going to shut the video down because I think I've rambled on enough. I apologise for bringing bronyism in it, or whatever you want to call it. But uh, I actually have to say it's one of my favourite fan bases. Because it is such a nice atmosphere in the groups. But uh, I will try not to talk about it. <laughs> Perhaps I could set up another channel specifically for that. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll talk to you again maybe tomorrow after, or when I get home from Mum's. So, uh, as I said, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.